this morning to do some tomato care, something I try to do at least once a week um, before it gets too, too hot today. We've had a lot of rain recently, so the beds are very well watered. I just really wanted to focus on getting some of our tomatoes um, pruned, and I'm going to do my search for hornworms, which I'll show you uh, what they look like and where they are. We use a tomato trellis system outside in the greenhouse where I put all my tomato beds um, in raised beds and then I put my tomato plants on a string and run them up to a trellis system that allows us to give them support. These are my indeterminate varieties, which means they will continue to grow and grow. And as you can see here, as they grow, I'm removing the lower leaves and the lower fruit and then I'm actually unable able to unwind this twine from its support system and lower the plant and lean it over. So I've actually moved a good foot over so far this season. And some plants even more. This cherry is, has moved several feet over. And uh, that lowering and leaning process allows us to keep the plant down where we can manage it, we can reach it, see the fruit, and it allows us to manage clipping them, which is something that I do pretty regularly as they grow. Our bucket of clips I keep on hand and I basically just come along and clip to the twine and then around the stem of the plant itself. You could do this with twine as well, it doesn't have to be done with a clip, but doing so with a clip allows it to stay free inside the clip and not get bound by the twine, which can cut it off and possibly cause it to bend. When I'm out trimming my tomato plants, I'm looking for the sucker growth between the primary stem of my tomato and its leaf set. And this right here is the perfect example of what I'm trying to get rid of. There's another one above, a little one coming in here, and it's real simple to get rid of them. You just wanna come in here and make a snip right between and get that out of there. We want the plant to put its energy into creating fruit, not into creating new leaf sets. In fact, you can often just pick them out with your fingers. But that's what we're looking for. You want the primary stem of your tomato plant to have these leaf sets that come across, but not to have that sucker growth in between. So I'm looking down, up and down the vine at all times, looking for that sucker growth. And that's really the key. If you can keep on top of pulling out those suckers and maintain the plant having a really nice center stem with leaf sets that come across that do not have sucker growth coming out of them, you'll get a lot more tomatoes out of your plant and healthier tomatoes at that. So I just go plant by plant, looking up and down. You can see these are some beautiful heirlooms that we're growing and they're starting to color. It has been very hot here this past week and they are, really have slowed down with their lycopene development and that means that we're getting less color. So I'm actually going to take some of these today that are at this stage where they've started to blush but they haven't fully developed. I'm going to take them inside and let them develop on the counter. 70 to 75 degrees is perfect. We're talking about getting rid of the suckers that are down the lower portion of the plant. I am very careful not to take things out toward the top. This is the top, the crown of the plant. This sucker probably could go, but I have done it wrong sometimes in the past and I don't want to make the mistake of doing it again. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that one. Indeterminate tomato plants continue to grow because of the top and if you take anything out of that crown, you risk stopping its growth. So just leave them alone and stick with taking out the suckers that are down further in the plant. And I remove a lot of leaf sets um, as the plant grows, definitely from the bottom. There's no need for it anymore once it's below the fruit. The other reason I remove it is to allow more airflow to get in and around the fruit. This one's a good example. It's crowding these pieces of fruit. So if I pull it away, it allows this to get nice airflow. So this is open. Lots of sun will get on here, lots of airflow. We can go ahead and pick these very soon. In addition to pruning your tomatoes, the second most important job, or maybe it's even the first, is taking care of pest management. Where I live, hornworms are the biggest problem. This is pretty characteristic of the problem that happens when you get hornworms, and this is how you know that you have them. If you start to see healthy branches that suddenly have lost their leaf set and they're eaten down to the stalk like this, pretty good chance you have a hornworm and it's time to start looking. You have to get up underneath the leaf and look and see because they often like to lay along the vein on the underside of the leaf and they blend in so easily. It's really hard to find them. And we definitely want to get them out of here because one hornworm can just 
decimate one plant overnight. It's amazing how fast they can do it. I just picked one from a different plant and you can see how little they are. So they can be hard to find when they're little. They're really hard to find when they're large and green because they're the exact same color as the underside of the leaf. Oh, found one. Here we go. See, they're not easy to find. He blends in very, very nicely, but there he is. I'm gonna go ahead and remove him. And I've seen a lot of people online asking about what this is. So this is a tomato hornworm. And unfortunately this one, unfortunately for him, good for me, this one is being used as a host from a parasitic wasp. By the way, if you're looking to get rid of hornworms easily, get yourself a black light and come out and look at night. The, the hornworm itself will glow, the stripe on its back will glow, and it'll make it easier to find them at night. Well, I'm developing quite a collection of hornworms here today, which is surprising because I clean them quite often. This is the big guy that I accidentally cut in half while I was trimming a leaf. I didn't even see it. Here's a little one on the end of a leaf. Um, here's a, one that gives you a perfect example of what a hornworm looks like. This is the shape of the body. It has that distinct stripe along its side, as well as that distinct horn coming out the back of it. And uh, usually I give these to my chickens. I just let them go ahead and munch away. And I'm going to do that for these guys. But this one I am going to leave near the garden and not let the chickens eat it because it is infested with the parasitic wasp. They've laid their pupa on the back of it and I wanna let them hatch because parasitic wasps are really helpful to the garden. Looks pretty gnarly, doesn't he? <laughs> very, very infested. So unfortunately this guy isn't gonna make it anyway, but if he is still alive, I don't want him chewing anymore. So I'm gonna get him out of here and out of my tomatoes, but I'm gonna leave him near the garden so that um, the wasps can stick around. But these guys, I'm gonna go feed to the chickens and I'm sure they will be delighted to have that snack. Something ate a good bit of this tomato. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to keep it, so I'm going to cut it away. But this isn't a hornworm. <laughs> Definitely something came in here overnight. Maybe there's, I don't think we've ever had rats out here, but I guess it's possible that there's a possum or some other critter out here. The greenhouse is not locked. We leave it open this time of year. So I guess maybe something had a bite. I'll just send that down to the chickens. I switched to a different irrigation system in my tomato beds this year, and I really like it. Really all we did was take a standard hose. We brought it over through all of this from my from my pump over here up and over and we just wire tied it in place and dropped it down to here. And then I found a fitting which appears to be leaking at the moment, but it's you get the point. <laughs> um, to attach this hose, I can easily pierce by putting in a um, here it is. I can pierce and put in one of these connections. And these connections allow us to have single lines that come out to drip emitters. And that's what this looks like. And it's a very slow drip, but I can put it right at the base of the plant wherever I want the water to go and direct my water right to the plant that needs it. We really like the system. It's worked very, very well. It's actually really done a good job of keeping weeds down in the beds because only the plants themselves are getting water. And I have some marigolds planted in here in between, and they have a drip emitter as well. So 10 or 15 minutes a couple times a week is about all we need, but it allows us to get really consistent directed watering directly to the plant. And I just get an occasional weed like this that I'm coming along and taking. It's not a big deal, but I like it very much. It's better than watering the entire plant. I'm not getting the rot that I've had in the past. Harvest time. Definitely need to get my share before the hornworms do. Look how beautiful. So a friend of mine came in one time and said, why are your tomato plants so naked? And <laughs> I really get great production doing it this way. It's unusual uh, for some, but by trimming my plants and keeping them free of all these extra leaves down below, I allow my fruit to get exposed to the sun and that allows them to produce very, very well and it keeps the tomato plant nice and clean. This one's really ready, even though it's very light in color, it will really ripen to a full uh, red tomato very soon inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it in. And these guys, these are ready. This is just a different variety of cherry. They're a, called a black cherry and they 
are ready to roll. They've been very good. We've been enjoying these a lot. Looks like we have a couple of yellow pears that are ready as well. I love these. It's not really a cherry, but it's a cherry size, although this one looks like two grew together. They're ready to go. Doing my inspection for hornworms here as well, and I am seeing some blossom and rot on a few of my tomatoes. And that usually is a matter of calcium. You can see them here. And this, this plant has been prone to that in the past. A little bit of blow cement rot. And I do think that this is a little calcium issue, oh, an inconsistent watering. It's not necessarily a sign that you don't have enough calcium. It has to do with the fact that the plant can't take up the calcium. And that may be because of inconsistent watering, or it may just be that we need more calcium in the soil here. This particular plant is not part, it's not in one of the beds that's part of my irrigation system where it's getting consistent watering. It's over here next to this cucumber trellis, which is really just about finished. And um, maybe it just hasn't been getting watered as consistently. So um, we'll just have to keep an eye on that. But the others that are coming in look really good and they don't have the blossom end rot. So we're really happy with those. Whenever I work in the garden, I use my wagon. Um, I can take it everywhere. I always have a weed bucket that goes to the chickens into our compost bin. I have my harvest bucket and my tools. And it's just so great to be able to pull this around with me wherever I go so that I can keep everything in one place and I can keep my hands free. This is a new bed for us this year, actually it's three beds, but a new garden for us this year that we added outside of our regular garden. I put this in so I'd have more room to put my Roma tomatoes. And when I mulched it with last year's compost, lots of pumpkins came up from the compost bin from last year. So we picked some of them out and we left a select few because the children were excited about having pumpkins and quite frankly, so am I. But this is our Roma tomato garden. Now this has been struggling right now because we've had so much rain that you see all of these splits. And I definitely need to get in here and clean these out today. So I'm gonna be harvesting a lot here today. Now these are determinant tomatoes, so they shouldn't be growing like this, but this one's growing up and out and over next to the one next to it, which is kind of high for a, for a determinant tomato. We're gonna to get these cleaned up today and search for more hornworms. Here's a perfect example of a hornworm doing its damage. Like a good harvest. I think we're going to go ahead and get these washed up and inside. I'm going to let them ripen for a few days. I think they'll be ready for canning later on this week. And we still have lots more to come. So I'll be back out here in a few days to check on these again. Mix it among this messy garden full of squash and pumpkins and tomatoes. We certainly have pulled a lot of fruit out of here. And here's the final product. These are my Roma tomatoes. The slicing tomatoes went into the kitchen um, and the cherry tomatoes did as well. But I didn't have enough room for all of these Roma tomatoes. This is an old bread rack that I found at an auction. And I like it a lot because I can wash things in it and I can dry in it. It dries out very quickly. I just brought these into the laundry because I have a nice sunny window here. And in a few days, these are gonna be ripe and ready for canning. So we'll get them into jars. Maybe some of them will go into the freezer, or make some salsa. Oh, we should definitely make some sun-dried tomatoes too, because I know a few people who like them. Thanks for joining us today. I hope that you've learned some new tricks and some information that can help you out. Tomatoes are really easy to grow, and boy, you can do so many things with them. I'm going to make another video sometime in the future about all of the different varieties of tomatoes that you can grow and how you can best use them. I think that would be really helpful as well. Until then, happy gardening and enjoy your tomatoes.